Our second scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, beginning with the 33rd verse. When they, had, when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who, was, who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our needs. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, one time in a college classroom, a professor did an example, a visual aid, if you will, for his class. And he had a jar, a glass jar, and some large rocks. And he took the rocks, and he put them into the jar, as many as he could get in. I'm trying to do this away from the microphone so you don't get an extra loud. And he held the jar up to his class and he said, is the jar full? So is the jar full? I'm seeing some yeses and I know. Can we get anything else in here? Yeah. Some of you read this on Facebook, I know it. <laughs> he then took some smaller rocks and began to pour them in. Where's to the end? Is it full? Sorry, Gary, I just got rocks on your floor. So he shook it down. And poured more rocks in. Is it full? No. <laughs> How long are you going to make me do this, gang? <laughs> and you can see how this went. I'll put an end to it. After the smaller rocks were finished, he put in sand. And every time the student said no more could go in, he was able to get more in. And after a while, he started putting water into it. And eventually, nothing else could go into the jar. So, what's the point of the example? You know, what lesson is to be learned from this? For some, it might be the idea that there's always room for more. That even when you think nothing more can be squeezed in, something else still can go in. But think about this truth. What if I had started putting the white rocks in first? Would the big rocks have been able to fit? No. If you don't put the big rocks in first, 
you'll never get all of it in. Or to put it another way, and this was a favorite saying of our former bishop, Scott Jones, you've got to keep the main thing the main thing. So what are the big things in your life? What are the big rocks? Perhaps it's something that you want to accomplish, a project. Maybe your big rock is having your family around and spending time with them. Maybe your big rock is teaching or mentoring others. You have to put the big rocks in first if you want to make them fit. If you don't do that, you'll never get them in at all. But our Luke text this morning reminds us that the biggest rock any of us must first fit into our lives is the rock of faith in Jesus Christ. Now we usually hear this portion of scripture from Luke a little bit closer to Easter. It can be hard other times of the year trying to remember Christ's death. We don't like to think about that. We, we like the happy Jesus. We like the Jesus that is walking amongst us and teaching us, sometimes getting angry with us. We don't like to think about the Christ who hung on the cross. We don't like to think about one of the most horrifying experiences that anyone could have faced, let alone the Son of God. But yet through this whole process, through this whole series of events that led to Christ's crucifixion, he kept focus on the main thing. God is still God. God is in control. And God expects obedience. Jesus never lost his head, and he never lost his heart. It was only because Jesus kept the main thing, the main thing, that he was able to love his enemies, even on the cross. It's because he kept the main thing, the main thing, that he could forgive those who put him on that cross. It's because he kept the main thing, the main thing, that he was able to reach out to someone in need, even as he was hanging on the cross. Jesus practiced what he preached, even in the midst of of the agony of hanging on the cross. Jesus was praying for his betrayers. Peter was just about to betray him if we kept reading in this text a little bit longer. Jesus refused to do evil in order that something good could come from it. Jesus put the big rocks in the jar first. He kept the main thing, the main thing. People were mocking him, saying, save yourself. If you're really the Messiah, why are you not saving yourself? But Jesus chose not to save himself in order to save others. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life will save it. This phrase, keep the main thing the main thing, focus, forces us, rather, to discern what the main things are, what the big rocks in our lives are. And we have to be judgmental to do that. Now, as followers of Christ, we often hear that, don't judge. Judge not, lest ye be judged. That is true, we are not supposed to judge others because we ourselves are not blameless. We have just as much sin as another person does and we are not supposed to judge someone based on their sins, but we are called to be judgmental and there is a difference. 
we have to be able to discern what the big rocks are and judge for ourselves what goes in our jar first and what small rocks will fill up the, cla the, the glass and can be put in last. And unfortunately, some of us have lost this ability. We often decide to keep the big rock of faith out of our jars. Now, it sits on top, like the picture shows. It's there, kind of. But it just, it sits there. And we only stop to dump some of the other rocks out and put the big rock of faith in Christ in when there is a problem, when there's an emergency. Otherwise, the rock of Christ is, we're just content to have him sit on top of the jar. We sometimes hear stories about those who are facing death and come to the determination that they have put the wrong rocks in the jar of their life. Many years ago, the New Yorker ran an article about an executive that they gave the, the pseudonym Kirk Baines. He had lived for the deal. He was very successful in life. He was successful because he knew when to get in quick and he knew when to be able to get out. He didn't care what the product was as long as a profit could be made on it. Oil, platinum, software, widgets, anything that could make him some money. He considered it all a game, played for big money, and once he had won enough, he was done and he moved on to the next thing. He had the same attitude when it came to religion and having a relationship with Christ. His doctor asked him after he was diagnosed, did he have a, have a religious affiliation? And he told the doctor, well, yeah, I'm Episcopalian. And he liked to celebrate the fun part of religion, Christmas, gifts, but he told the doctor that he refused to put much stock into a church founded because Henry VIII wanted a younger wife. He explained his hesitancy this way. He said, I'm not a long-term investor. I like quick returns. I don't believe in working for dividends that I'm not going to get until I get to heaven. Now, Baines had signed on for a high-risk experimental treatment for his cancer, and it looked like it was going to work for the first few months. He did very well, but then the cancer came back. And as it did, he came to the point where he started asking questions about what he had done with his life. He said that he had always read newspapers for the purpose of gaining information that was going to be useful for him in making his business dealings. He never read it for the human interest stories. He never paid attention much about what was going on in the world or with people in the world. I had no interest in creating some, I had no interest in creating something not a product or a partnership with a person. And now I have no spiritual equity, no dividends coming in, nothing to show in my portfolio. I was a self-absorbed, uncaring jerk. It's not too late for us to see what Baines only saw at the end. That the judgments we make about what rocks go in our jar first determine what kind of life we have. It's time to start making some decisions about the big rocks and the little rocks. 
It's time to live out 2,000 years of moral wisdom about what is right and wrong and start making some judgments. The 20th century poet Phyllis McGinley says that virtue is humanity's Mount Everest. That's kind of an interesting quote. Virtue is our Mount Everest. It's time to start making heroes of those who climb the highest. It's time to start making movies about climbing the rock of faith rather than making movies about escaping from rocks. It's time to tell this world in no uncertain terms that the biggest rock of all, the rock that has to go in first, is Jesus Christ, who is the rock of ages. If the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, then what is the main thing? The main thing is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. The main thing is that God raised him from the dead, beating down death forever. The main thing is that the human struggle entails suffering. There's no way we can avoid it. But there's also suffering that is expected of us. Are you struggling to make sure there's justice in the world? You will suffer. Are you struggling to bring peace to the world? You will suffer. Are you struggling for the truth to shine in all circumstances, you will suffer. But the other main thing is that we are never alone. For there is no place that we can go. There is no sin that we can commit that will put us out of the reach of the grace of Christ's sacrifice and the gifts of God's love. These are the really big rocks that we need to make sure we have in our jar. All of the rest is filler. Is the big rock in your jar the rock of ages? Jesus Christ, insulted, mocked, sneered at, beaten, ridiculed, falsely accused, betrayed and abandoned, and finally murdered, is the big rock and the first rock. If you anchor your faith to that rock, all of the other rocks will fall into place. Amen.